Hi there, Leo. I'll be doing my weekly three-card tarot reading, and then I'll be doing a combination card and astrology dice reading. Now, the cards aren't in any particular order, and the three 12-sided astrology dice represent the zodiac signs, the planets or lunar nodes, and the houses. The cards that you received this week is the moon, the nine of cups, and judgment. I thought, hey, wait a minute here. I thought I saw this before. So I looked back and, yeah, Gemini got the hermit, the nine of cups, and judgment. Now the hermit was doing some soul searching for some enlightenment and wisdom to go through the judgment card for resurrection and rebirth. But it's a lot different here with the moon card because the moon card is about secrets and deception. And things aren't what they really appear to be. There's a facade. Life is an illusion. And sometimes it's not the lies that people tell you, but it's what they didn't say. The reflective light of the moon causes distortions of shadows and makes paths look different at night than they do during the day. And this can wrestle up some feral emotions and instill fear and leave everything in kind of a dreamy time state, kind of halfway in between being awake and asleep. So how are you supposed to find a truth when you can barely see the path in front of you? But the moon is about intuition, dreams, messages, premonitions. It's plugged into the cosmos and you have to plug into it and receive its subtle messages. This is a time where your eyes and your mind are playing tricks on you and you have to keep a good grip on reality. So you don't drift off into fantasy land. Now if you don't uncover the secrets and find some truths, you're not going to be able to go through the judgment card of rebirth. This really doesn't have much to do with the earthly more than the celestial. You're looking for a celestial cleansing, a purification. Because this is all connected to your past actions and accountability for your behavior. There'll be rewards or punishment. On the earthly level, this could be some type of legal decision, court proceedings. Whatever it is, you have to get through the judgment card to get to the Nine of Cups card for fulfillment and satisfaction. Abundance and come to the end of the cycle. You're almost there. You're ready to leap over the finish line. Now you have some luck coming into the whole mix here because you have the Nine of Cups. And I always say curiosity killed the cat and satisfaction brought him back. And that might be literal here because the cat metaphorically died in order to come back for a rebirth. And here you have some type of luck bringing you through this rebirth. But maybe it's just fortunate enough that you know now that there's been some secrets and some deception going on and you've been seeking a truth. Truth within yourself and truth within other people. And the Nine of Cups is about happiness and satisfaction, and that's what you're seeking. Now I rolled the dice and you received Taurus, the Sun, and the Seventh House. Now you've been walking in the shadow of the moon, and maybe even being your shadow self that's making it difficult for you to go through this rebirth through the Judgment card, but you received the Sun die. Now the sun is shining on you. It's shining a light, perhaps, on the truths that you've been looking for. But you've been resistant because Taurus is very stubborn and steadfast. And the seventh house is about partnerships. But really here is what you're trying to achieve is balance. The sun in Taurus makes this fixed sign seem even more unmovable. And changing the status quo this week might not be an option. Oh no, I don't want to change anything. 
and you have a lot of fear because the practical side of you wants nothing to do with risk-taking. Possessions are your rewards and you don't give them up easily. Taurus is a pleasure-seeking sign and the Nine of Cups is about satisfaction and pleasure. So this bodes really well having the Nine of Cups there. Now the seventh house is about partnerships and the sun in the seventh house injects relationships with just the right vibrations. But you might be more concerned with what people think of you rather than what you think of yourself. And this is a time to be kind to yourself and find peace inside and out. And maybe the presence of the judgment card is about you worrying about what other people think of you. And that really shouldn't be a consideration this week. Either they love you or they don't. And worrying about it will not change the truth. And hopefully you can find the truth with the moon card there. But the sundae is exposing the truth if you're willing to see it. If you're not too stubborn not to look. Taurus in the second house seeks balance with significant relationships. Maybe it's time to stop the stubbornness and show your easygoing side this week. You know, go slow and steady. And there won't be any big blips in the graph and partnerships will run smoothly. But with the moon card there, you're shadowy inflexible self could rear its ugly head and really turn people off this week. And they might take the judgment card as a ticket and say, here, you can have this judgment card. I'm out of here. Maybe you should find some rational thoughts and some irrational chaos that's been surfacing within yourself. Don't let fear and anxiety overcome you. But what you have to overcome now is your obstinate nature. That surfaces quite often this week. And I wish you acceptance, peace, and happiness.